Hello, and welcome to another cover with Casey. Today's a fun one. I'm trying to be quiet because there are people listening to me recording and I'm embarrassed, but it's exciting. Look what I've got. Ah, let's open this bad boy. I see your paintbrush. Okay, what we got first? We got a needed eraser. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, okay. Let's, let's do this thing. Okay. We got a needed eraser. Derwent, again, we found this out. <laughs> was it last time we got Derwent? And I was like, I don't really like Derwent, but I've never had a Derwent needed eraser, so it might be good. Ooh, it's very squishy. It'd be nice to have a new one. Okay, then we got all this good stuff. Oh, knowing that it's watercolour paper definitely means we're probably going to get watercolour paints. I'm excited. Or oh, pencils. Ooh. Okay, so here's the zine. So we have got a needed eraser. Definitely got a paintbrush. There's a pencil in here. I can see the end of it. Oh, okay. So this is the December box. This is the sticker, which has come off of its backing a little bit and is now wonky. Um, okay. It's just, you know, put that back on like this. Give me a second. I do this. It was never wrong. Okay. There's the sticker this time. I don't know which way it's meant to go up, but kind of looks like an eye to me. That's cool. Boop. We got a paintbrush, which, wow, I um, I wonder what kind of paintbrush this is. <laughs> that side's completely wiped off. It is a Royal and R19 in size four. It's a round brush. It's interesting. Okay, we got a Faber Castell Gold Faber 6B pencil. Ooh, that's pretty. And then we've got these art crayons. Three of them in purple. I think they don't have names on them today. Oh, plum, pomegranate, and sunshine yellow. This should be fun. Um, and then the, the paper, which, oh, and the, the eraser and the paper. Okay, and we got the print, which is interesting, by Marta Bedlej, oh, from Poland. Good on you, Marta. Okay, this is fun. So we got Derwent in this watercolour paper, 12 sheets. Uh, 300 GSM, it's smooth surface, so I'm assuming that means it's hot press. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, it is smooth. Okay, I approve of this. So you can probably hear my stepson in the background. He's a uh, right outside the bedroom door, talking in his loudest inside voice ever. Um, but yes, so we get the Faber Castell Gold Faber Pencil with High Quality Faber Star Graphite Pencil with Super Soft Core. Da 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 da. It, okay, cool. It doesn't look like it's water soluble, so that's good. Ooh, that does feel nice. Hello. Nice. Okay. Then we got these bad boys. <laughs> Twist. Okay. So is that it? Is that like retractable holder? Um, okay, if you say so, I. I'm not seeing how this is retractable in any way, but uh, I 
got some. Oh, wow. Okay, that's. <laughs> that feels like butter. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, watercolor crayon. Let's try this. Put some water on there and. Um... Yep, that's. Smooth. Okay, we'll try the pomegranate. Yep, definitely butter. <laughs> butter. Okay, so this can't really get rid of the look of the crown underneath, but the surface pigment does run. Color scheme I got. That's that's nice. Um, let's see how it grows if we do it like this. Okay, so you can get nice by doing that. Okay, okay. It's definitely something. How about if we want to blend it out, so we put a bit of that one next to that one. Can we then make a smooth gradient? Let us see. No, but you can make orange. <laughs> I think I did that wrong. Okay friends, so I'm back, um, with clean water, got my palette, these have dried so you can actually see how nice the colours actually are, like, so the blend didn't, you know, blend too smoothly, but the colour that it made was really nice, so, um, if I want to do gradients I'm going to have to think of a different way, which is why I got my palette, because I thought if we were to scribble a little bit into the bottom of my palette, like so, then add a touch of water to it, it might act like as if I had put uh, just straight watercolour on my paintbrush. And then I, like see, I can do the same with the yellow. I don't know why I'm putting the lid back on as if it's going to dry out like a marker. Um, then you get the yellow activated and you get a bit of yellow on the brush and you do it the other way and then we might be able to make a nice sort of gradient like that and put some in the middle and so on so they dry a lot quicker than standard watercolors so if I want it to be smooth I have to do it really quickly but for the most part you know it looks a lot smoother than that did so that's the plan. Now we just got to think of what we're going to draw. So I didn't do it last month, but this month the prompt for Tutorial Challenge is Expressive Expressions. So I thought maybe I could do someone pulling a really interesting expression or something. So let's do some, uh, some scribbling with our new pencil. Okay, so I realise this video is uploaded quite late. I um, got distracted by life and other things, but this should have been uploaded near the end of January and now, now we're at the start of March, so I apologise for that. It's just been a bit of a life thing lately. I've been very busy and not had time to edit. So I've got a few old, well, month or two old, recorded videos that I have yet to edit and upload for you guys so I'll be 
I'll be doing those in the next few weeks um, while still working on new content for you as well to get myself back into the weekly uploads. I really appreciate all of the continued support from you guys. The The new follows and the likes on my videos has been really, really appreciated, especially since I haven't been uploading at all for the past couple of months. So thank you so much for that. Um, and yeah, so back to the actual video. This one was quite fun in the sense that I just got to sort of mess around and make a new character and not really have to stress too much about, um, you know, worrying if I was really portraying what the character was supposed to look like when doing fan art and stuff like that. That's something I struggle with. So I got to just sort of play around and make this fun little devil girl with this crazy big smile all crouched up and try and fit her into this um, tiny little piece of paper. Um, I wanted to take up as much of the white space as possible just because I have a habit of sort of drawing characters just sort of floating in the middle of a page and not really doing anything with them. Um, even if the pose is interesting or something, sometimes it can just look really bland and bare. And I remember a time when I was younger that I would just draw characters much bigger and take up more space. And sure, you might not fit the whole body onto the page, but it still looked really dynamic and more interesting and less of the page got wasted, um, especially when doing a completed illustration like this if it's just sort of in the middle of the page you don't really want to use the rest of the page for anything else because you don't want to ruin it um so I'm trying to break myself out of that sort of habit um and that's what this one was all about I had fun making her very sort of squished up into the box and fill up as much of that space as I could with the pose and yeah I I think I did I had recently watched a um, a video by Drawing with Waffles, as you all know by now, probably I love her videos, and she did a similar video designing a character, and she gave the character this really cute outfit, and I sort of took that and ran with it. I think that was this one, <laughs> um, because I wanted, I, I just liked the way that character looked, so I sort of took major inspiration from her and then I actually remembered to tape down my paper so that it doesn't warp as much because you know I never remember to do that but I'm, I'm proud of myself for remembering that this time it's just so satisfying at the end when you get to peel that tape off and just see those crisp bright borders um yeah though I do think I had a little bit in, of an issue with this where the paper ripped a little bit with the tape but that's neither here nor there um, as I said in the intro sort of section of this when I was testing out the crayons I mostly used the palette for like the skin tone and stuff just to mix it a bit nicer um, I didn't want to try and mix it on the page because I was having a lot of difficulty getting that nice sort of peachy tone with the pink and the yellow so I just went with using my palette for that one and I think yeah, I don't really consider it cheating because I'm using the um what's it called the uh, blah, 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 art supplies oh, oh my goodness is it October I'm yawning <laughs> using the art supplies to the best of my ability by bringing the tablet in and stuff and I believe I'm using a different paintbrush as well than the one that was in the box that might be considered cheating if you're all about only using the products that came in the scroller box for the scroller box challenge but I just I prefer my own paint brushes than the one that came in the box because I like how soft and nice the bristles are and to be honest I should prefer these paint brushes because I did spend a lot of money on them <laughs> um yeah so here we go with the Minecraft videos. <laughs> that, that's kind of my thing at the moment, just watching Minecraft playthroughs by various 
YouTubers. I, I apologize. Just ignore that bit if you're not interested. Just watch the art. Ignore the, the Minecraft in the top middle of the screen there. Um, with this actual uh, medium, the watercolour crayons, I wanted to try and get as much use out of them as possible and try the different techniques. Like for the hair, I scribbled straight onto the paper to try and give the hair a bit more of an actual strand-like texture to it. Um, unfortunately, with the yellow, it did all sort of just blend into one big blob regardless because it's so bright and so light. You can't really see the... Um, the strokey texture nearly as much as with the darker colours, but I don't know, I still like it. Um, it was, yeah, it's fun. It, they feel like butter to colour with. Like, I, I think I said that a lot in the actual swatch sheet section, but they're so smooth and they sort of glide over the top of the paper instead of um, catching on it like you would with a pencil. Like, you know, when you colour with a pencil, you can feel where it's gripping. The surface of the paper these things just glide over the top of it and it's just really weird and yeah that buttery <laughs> um i don't really know what else i can say about this piece as it goes it was such a long time ago oh. <sighs> and i should be yawns again it's not even night time. It's like three in the afternoon. I don't know why I'm yawning. I, I really apologize. <laughs> Just uh, consider it um, me trying to make you yawn and, and not that I'm just really tired and should look after myself better. Yeah, that's it. I'm trying to make you yawn. I wonder if that does work if you can't actually see the face. Does anyone know? If you can't see the face of the person who is yawning, does it still make you yawn if you only hear it? I don't know if that's a thing. I'd, I'd have to look it up. But if you know, please feel free to comment below so that I can figure it out. Um, yeah, oh, I was trying the gradient technique again here. Um, just using the water on the tip of the crayon itself with the brush instead of scribbling it into the palette. Because, like I said, I wanted to try all the different techniques I could think of with these in this one piece. Um... And yeah, it was not quite as effective, as effective as I would have liked, but it still looked okay. Um, I used the purple, which looks blue on camera, but is a purple, I promise you. It looks a lot more purple in the palette there than it does on the actual crayon, but it, I promise you it is actually purple. And um, yeah, I used that for the shirt and the gloves. I wanted to try and, um, whilst using all the colours, I wanted to also utilise the white of the paper to some extent. So with like the gloves here, I just sort of coloured the edges and then blended it out so it kept like a little bit of a gradient of dark to light purple by using that white to make it a more pastel colour. And then with the purple that I used in the palette, I use that on the t-shirt to give it stripes and leaving the white gaps in between and I think I left it that way I don't actually remember if I filled in those gaps or not but um that was my intent I wanted to leave some white space in the outfit so it wasn't all just this big cacophony of bright saturated colors because as much as I love this colour selection, I have a tendency of forgetting that you can actually just leave the white there and it still works effectively for the um, costume. It's not like being lazy. You can utilise that white space and it still works. Um, yeah. And then once everything had dried, I decided to do the line art for this with my purple... Um, Prismacolor colour erase pencil because I just I've said it before and I will say it again I love the texture that it gives as line art mostly over like markers and like normal watercolours I did struggle with it over the crayons a little bit because of the texture that they have was a bit waxy so the 
um, the lead didn't stick all the way in some places, but um, yeah, I just like the sketchy look that it gives to the art, and I had a lot of fun doing it, as I always do when I'm using the Prismacolors for the line art, and I'm so happy with how it ended up at the end. I actually stuck this one into my sketchbook so that I could see it all the time. A lot of my scroller box art just ends up on the loose pieces of paper sort of floating around my room somewhere. So I made sure I stuck this one in so that I would um so that I would see it when I open and go through my sketchbook. Um I think the effort I made to make the piece sort of fill up as much of the page as possible I think that definitely helps in the whole I like this piece um feels a yeah I just I like the layout and I like the colors and I like the way it looks and it makes me happy and I had a lot of fun doing it so I think that's all I can really say about this piece um <laughs> yeah um, please, if you don't mind, hit that like button below if you enjoyed it, comment and subscribe if you can or want to. I mean, it would really help me out, but I'm not going to force anybody just, you know, like, comment, subscribe, YouTube things. Let's do this. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, you want to just, just click that button. Okay. That's enough of that. Um, I will leave you with some music to watch the end of this with, and I will see you next week for the next one, which I believe is January's Scroller Box, because I have recorded the videos for both, and um, they, they, they haven't been uploaded yet, so I apologize. And yes, I'll see you next week. Bye! Thank you.